Stop wasting your time building all these fancy elaborate jigs. You don't need them. Switching it up today. Here's one of the things that agitates me most about YouTube. All of these super fancy elaborate jigs for the table saw or the router table or what have you. They're great, they're fun, they're visually interesting, but no furniture maker actually spends that much time making a universal jig. And not that it's a waste of time, having jigs like that saves space, right? So if space is at a premium, that's great. But when you're a professional furniture maker, time is at a premium more than space. So we tend to slap quick jigs together that actually function really well, but may not be the prettiest things in the world and don't make for a great thumbnail. That is what we're doing today. I've made it many, many times. We're gonna make it again today. Let's get into it. So I'm in the midst of a trestle table build at the moment. You can see I've got my parts rough milled right now. And on the trestle table base and on the bench base, there's gonna be a lot of mortise and tenons to hold this thing together. So in order to cut those tenons accurately and repeatably, I'm gonna make a jig for the table saw to do so. Now this is my current table saw setup. This is a table saw from Harvey. I've had it for about four months. It's been a solid saw, but my old tenoning jig won't fit on this saw because I made it for a saw stop. So I'm going to have to remake this and custom fit it to this situation. Now, in order to make this style fence work, I'm going to have to remove these knobs and the adjustable fence. So let's do that. Now that I have a nice square fence, I can pull these dimensions and make the same style jig just to fit this fence. So I'm very simply going to pull my dimensions by loose measurements. I've got about two and three quarters there. My verticals are just about two and a quarter. So that should be good for right now. I'm just gonna rip those pieces and see if it makes a nice tight box. lied to you once and this is kind of the process of making these jigs up as you go along i initially said my measurement was two and a quarter here but that's to the fence itself i'm going to come up to the top of my sill plate so that i can tack these two together so my measurement now two and 15 sixteenths got a nice tight fit on here. I'm going to tack this together with a little quick and thick, some one and a quarter brads. You can use TB1 if that's what you have. I just happen to have this, so this is what I'm using. You don't need much glue. I'm not going to put an excessive amount on there. I don't really want any squeeze out on here. I just want to have enough to make sure she stays together. I'll give it a little rub for good measure. Now, for posterity's sake, I'm gonna throw a couple of clamps on here. One over here, one over here. I'm gonna clean out any excess glue on the interior. Beautiful. So next up, what I want to make is the top plate or the sill plate here. So the total width of these pieces is four and an eighth heavy or maybe four and five thirty seconds. It's time to attach the actual fence portion of the jig. However, it is absolutely critical that this stays flat and perpendicular to the table 
So in order to ensure that, instead of just gluing it on kind of like I did the last one, I'm gonna add a couple of corner blocks right here just as an added benefit. Now all I'm doing is relieving this so that I have a parallel face to clamp to if and when I actually need to clamp these pieces to my jig. In case this gets in the way, this will just make life a little bit easier. got my angle brackets attached and it's absolutely critical at this point that you check to make sure brackets are perpendicular to the table. As long as both of those are perfectly perpendicular and everything looks golden, we can attach the face. Now as I was attaching these, my shopmate Larissa came in and she said, hey, why are you making this out of plywood? I have a sheet of MDF if you would prefer to use that for the face. And I said, that's excellent. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I just think MDF has a little bit more grip to it. When you clamp things to it, it tends to hold a little bit better. So I'm gonna use this for the face now instead of my original plan, which was to use the ply. If all you have is ply, that's totally fine. But since I have this available, this is what I'm gonna use. Now, in order to apply my face, I'm gonna put some glue on these surfaces. I'm gonna lean this up, clamp it in place, and just tack along. Now, I'm gonna use, I don't know, a handful of pieces of paper as a spacer underneath so that there is a micro gap underneath my board so that just in case anything ever gets under there, it's not gonna hold me up. Now, we're gonna check this for square to the table one more time. That is dead nuts. That is, I mean, I don't even know how to describe that gap. That at the top, it's canted out by a micrometer, a tenth of a hair. Now, I'm almost glad this happened because something to point out is we're building furniture. Okay, we're not engineers, we're not building the Eiffel Tower. If it is a tenth of the thickness of a piece of paper, if it's the thickness of a plane shaving, that's more than enough for 99.999% of the joinery I'm gonna be cutting, so I'm happy with that. Now the last thing I need to do is tack on a fence back here so that I have something to actually hold the thing to, make sure it stays square, and then we'll be ready to cut a couple of tenons. Now, if ever you have any nail heads protruding, you can use a mill file and just come in there and flush them up like that. You can absolutely take a punch and punch them in. Nothing wrong with that. I like having a good flat surface on my jigs. And you can see how quick and easy that is. All right, so my jig is built. It's very, very simple and there's 37 and a half ways you could zhuzh this up, right? You could add a handle on the back. You could poke a bunch of holes in here for your clamps. You could make this border piece wider so you could put some toggle clamps on there. That's all fine and well, and I've done that in the past. The goal of this jig was to be simple, effective, and efficient. So I'm not gonna do any of that. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut a tenon now. I know most sleds are operated from the right hand side of the blade and that's totally fine. However, the lighting over here is not good 
the lighting over here is much better. So I'm gonna operate it from the left-hand side. What I'm going to do is set up my blade to cut the outside cheek so that as it gets cut, it falls away from the blade. One clamp low, one clamp high. Let's make a cut. So that's that, friends. The simple, effective, efficient tenoning jig. No bells, no whistles. If your goal is to make a simple jig so that you can get back to cutting furniture parts, this thing never lets me down. I'm not suggesting this is the only way to cut tenons. Frankly, for a tenon this size, I'd probably just use the speed tenon method. There's a myriad of different ways you can do that. I just am giving you one option to use if that's your preferred method. And, if you do zhuzh it up in 37 and a half different ways, let me know how you did so down in the comments. I'm curious how you dress it up to make it all fancy and pretty and put pig on a lipstick. Strike that, reverse it. But for now, friends, I'm gonna get out of here, go get a little food in me, and then get to cutting joinery. Can you guess what joint we're cutting next week? I'll see you then. Cheers. Mm -hmm.